Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now when we left off we were still just attacking a couple of vassals and we are getting, well I've actually bought another Enterprise while I was off screen. Wasn't I off screen or did I buy it on screen? Oh, I can't remember now actually, but we are now here about to help this fellow. Yes, about to help Count Count Alagur, I believe, yes, move in to help Count Alagur, because he is just about to lose, and we're going to get a really, really big relation spike with him, and maybe, just maybe we'll be able to take Count Rafad prisoner. I think that would be pretty nice. As you can see, though, there's not too many here, so I'm just going to be charging straight on in. There's not really any necessity for me to use any kind of tactic right now, so we are all good. And, oh yes, I think I did neglect to level up Jeremus in the previous episode, although, has it, wait a minute, has he just, has he just leveled up again? I think maybe he's leveled up again and I was able to give it to him, I don't think so somehow, but he did just get a kill, so I'm pretty happy with that, it's, it's kind of a bit crazy how he's able to get a kill, considering so many cavalry are amidst all of the enemies. But there you are, we were able to quite easily win that. And what? Really? He's really only giving us a four relation? That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. And we can take this guy prisoner if we so desire. Probably not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be letting him go because we want the honor, of course. And oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to start scouting around in this episode for a thief to take, yes, for a thief to take for, to create our own faction, because as it stands right now, I think we could probably pull it off. I think we could probably pull it off pretty easily, but it really depends on which thief it is, because if we decide to go for something like, um, where, could, where could we go? Well, technically, we could try to take Uxkarl or something along those lines, but I'm going to need to find the leader of the Saranids to get ourselves free of him, of course, because obviously, you know, he technically still has us under oath for our mercenary work. Now, the reason why I say soon is because what I would like to do is level up a, a couple more of these archers, because other than that, all of our units here are the highest level they can be. And basically, it's just going to make things, well, much easier, isn't it? It's I mean, we have, what, what is it? We have 17 Serenid Guards. We could probably use a couple more of those. But, oh well, as it stands, I guess I just didn't do that. And we do have Count Play here. Count Play actually likes us quite a bit, so I don't really r want to run him into King Gra- uh, King Graveth, why are you being so annoying? Really? Really annoying. Oh well, anyway, I think what we could do is we could probably take Ribule Castle from the Swadians. And I'm thinking, yeah, look at that. I mean, there's, there's 169, yeah, there's, it's about 210. There's about 210, 220 there. So I'm not particularly happy about that, to be honest. But if we do take this, it means that we are going to still benefit. Oh well, let's just have a look here. I have 290 renown, 11 honor. 11 honor is not very good at the moment, but it's okay. You know, it's okay. But yes, I have 21 right to rule as it stands. If I were to wait for three more companions to go off, then I'd have 30. And I believe having 30 does dramatically decrease your likelihood of having a declaration of war against you. But that's the thing. If I do take it, then we'd be our own faction and, well, Suno would be the only thing and the Swadians would not be able to take it back. So if I were to... I can't go for Suno. Suno is, in my opinion, too difficult because it has not been besieged ever before. There are 71 man at legs there, you know, man at legs. And there's also, you know, 10 Swadian days as well instead of, instead of Swadian nights. Oh, yeah, we're going there. We're going there again, apparently. Anyway, basically, I think Ribule Castle could be our best shot. We could try for Teverin Castle. Teverin Castle might actually be pretty good, too. Let's just go over there and uh, just take a look because Teverin Castle, I don't think would be such a bad idea because it's not in the middle of everything, you know, it's off to the side. Could be a very good defensive 
structure for us. And there's 155 there. They do have 14 Swedian knights there. But that's pretty good. You know, I think that's pretty okay. You know, it's reasonable. So I think what I'm going to try and do is I'll try to find Sultan Hakim. And then we're going to get released from our mercenary contract. We don't necessarily need the mercenary contract anymore. It was basically just a device for us to level up our units. For us to fight vassals and get renown and honor and money basically as well because i didn't want to really want to fight bandits anymore so yeah it's a it's a pretty you know decent way to get some extra cash anyway i'm going to be leveling up trainer skill because if we are going to start a new our new faction then obviously it's going to make huge difference if we have even more trainers because they're well where we're going to be recruiting a bunch of really low level units most likely rodox because the rodox are in the area around here so we probably want to do that anyway I'm going to try and find Sultan Hakim, and I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so yeah, this is not Sultan Hakim. Yeah, I went all the way down there, took a look, and, well, spoke to him, and basically, there is no way for us to be free of our mercenary bond. The only thing we can wait to do is basically just you know, anticipate the message that will no doubt come up in about, I think, two in-game weeks. So I might just wait for some time and hopefully then we can, you know, do something after that with creating our own faction. But I thought, well, what better way to spend that time than obviously to, you know, build up our forces even more, you know, get some more renown, get some more of everything basically and I would like to try and get an additional enterprise because obviously as our costs go up as our army costs go up we're going to need even more enterprises and I was actually half thinking that we might try to go for dirim now the one thing that I can do is I can actually become a vassal of the Saranids. Now, I didn't particularly want to do this in this series. I did not want to become a vassal because that is going to affect our honor because our honor, yeah, honor is not particularly, I mean, you know, honor is fine. Like, you know, it's not really necessary for anything in particular. It just makes it a little bit easier for you when you create your own faction because of course, then you have a number of people that think you're a good person. You know, and then they, they, you know, sort of gravitate towards your faction and they join you and it's all fine and dandy and all that sort of thing. And it's just great. But, you know, if you become a vassal and then you leave, you know, or you, you, you know, take a couple of fiefs in the Saranid Sultanate's name, then obviously you're not really going to be able to do that because then you will have a major honor decrease, which is not very good. So I was a bit worried about that, to be honest. But, you know, actually, I could become a vassal and then I could just leave. I can just renounce my oath. I can basically just say to him, okay, I, I've been a vassal for two seconds now. I don't really like it. I'm going to go. So <laughs> that, that is another option for us. You can actually do that if you so desire. But as it stands, I don't really want to do that either, because of course then there's also relation decreases and all kinds of things, and it's more than likely that Sultan Hakim would take a great exception to that, and he's probably gonna try and hunt us down or something along those lines, which I would not really be appreciative of. So anyway, we are done with count play once again. I'm actually not taking that much loot, to be honest, because most of the loot here is very, very cheap. And it doesn't really seem to sell for that much. Alright, so we have another vassal fight here. There's basically nothing else I can do until they release us from our mercenary payments. And obviously, as I've said, I'm not really wanting to become a vassal and then renounce our allegiance or anything like that. That is technically one of the easiest ways that you can create your own faction, though. You can join as a vassal to a faction... You can take a bunch of things, and then when they decline to give you a particular fief, then you can just basically say, Oh, I'm going to spit in your face and leave! And then you, 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 know, you take the fiefs with you, and, you know, then you create your own faction from that. Or, what you do is you take a bunch of fiefs that they give you, you leave them with literally no garrison, and then you renounce your allegiance, or, you know, you indeed get, get kicked out. They take all your fiefs, and then you just take all the fiefs back, because they're, obviously they're not garrisoned. So technically you could do that as well. I'm not entirely sure if they adapt to that anymore. I mean, maybe they've changed it or something, but I do know in some mods you can pull that off quite handily. 
Now, this guy does have 120, but I took a look at his army composition, and it's basically militia. Yes, it's militia and recruits, so we should be absolutely fine. And yeah, we should, we should be able to take these guys on, no problem at all. Hopefully we're not going to lose anyone. Hopefully Jeremus is going to be able to get a couple of kills, perhaps. It would be quite nice if he's able to. If he's not able to, then, well, so be it. I don't really mind too much. Oh yeah, by the way, I found a Ransom Broker at Praven. And obviously that's just fantastic. We were able to gain another decent amount of cash. A little bit, little bit amount of cash. We also got paid, by the way. So that's obviously one week down. I think there's just one more week remaining. I am currently being paid 700 as a mercenary payment right now. And I'm actually pretty impressed by this because usually the mercenary payments are really, really low. And this is technically quite low because obviously it doesn't fully cover all of our wages. But if you think about it, it's, it's actually pretty decent for native. I know in, you know, mods like Prophecy of Pendor, for example, the mercenary payment adapts. It's very adaptive to the current units and the current weekly wage that you have. So you can basically have as many high level, high tier, high cost units that you want and the mercenary payment will just cover that, no problem at all. So you can basically just make pure profit. So there you go, our only casualties were Mamluks. We, wow, we absolutely destroyed them, very nice. And we didn't take any, oh, did they have any Swedian knights? I don't think they had any Swedian knights. So I, I'm, yeah, I was just a bit surprised there that we were unable to take any. So I, I guess what I can just do is just take all of these. There is a bastard sword. It's not going to sell for that much, but we're going to take it anyway. And yeah, as you can see, I actually chased him from Praven because I was waiting here for some time to hopefully get some of the time gone. You know, I was trying to spend the time, get it a little bit faster. And yeah, by the way, Praven's also under siege by the Nords. Yes, the Nords are trying to take a lot of things of the Rodox. Yeah, apparently the, the Nords took a an amazing exception to the fact that the, you know, the Rodox have expanded out so much. And there you go. There's 9,000 dinars for us. Cool. There we go. I had about 5,000 after the wages from our enterprises and all that sort of thing and well now we have 9,000 so yeah gained 4,000 just from ransom brokering and selling and all that sort of thing that's it's pretty lucrative okay so what are we going to do here well we have Forentis he has obviously some trainer skill but he's only level 10 so I think it's absolutely fine for us to just go for a little bit more in iron flesh they're going to be absolute beasts when they are fully leveled up and I'm actually I'm actually half tempted to declare war against the Rodox when we are free of our oath, because if we do the Rodox, we could take Praven. I don't know about Haringoth Castle, but I didn't really want to fight the Rodox right now. I personally felt like killing the Swadians was a much better idea. But the problem is with them is that if we actually do declare war against them, then Suno is going to be a huge thorn in our side, because we basically won't be able to take it. You know, it's one of the... Oh, King Harlaus. King Harlaus, come here. Oh, yes. I would very much like to attack you. Very, very much. There we go. But yeah, as I was saying, Suno's going to be a big thorn in our side because if someone... It doesn't have to be us, but if someone is unable to take it, then it's just going to be a festering wound. Just just left there on the landscape we'll be unable to do anything about it and it's going to be one of those things that will just stick around again and again and again and it's just going to be so annoying because the vassals will then spawn consistently from there and they'll keep attacking us you know they'll keep attacking us obviously they are currently at war against other people you know obviously the Saranids and things but if they make peace with the Saranids, then I'm unsure who else they are at war against. Maybe we'll have to take a look at the notes after this and see what's going on. Alright, there doesn't seem to be too many units here that can actually deal any damage to us, so I'm pretty happy with that. Hmm, it seems like they... yeah, it seems like King Harlaus really is having a bad time. He's, uh, he's definitely having a bad time of things, isn't he? And I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, i got to say, you know, King Harlaus, he was not... Was he was he actually good to the original Barney? I, I think he was okay to the original Barney. He didn't... Uh, he, yeah, that's the thing. He, he actually did not give us the fiefs that we conquered. He actually gave us... Did we only have... 
a castle and a village or something, and then the rest of them he gave to himself or something. I'm actually unsure whether I'm remembering that correctly, but I seem to remember that he gave a bunch of the fiefs that I took to someone else, and that was that was really quite bad. Okay, so we lost one Saranid Mamluk, that's really not too bad. He did manage to escape, however, which is, eh, that's kind of annoying. That is kind of annoying. All right, so let's just take all of those. Thank you very much. And there's ugh, there's not really anything here worth taking, to be honest. I mean, I could take all of them, but it's not really necessary, is it? We're, we're kind of doing okay on money at the moment, and the prisoners will sure, well surely be enough to cover ourselves. So, let's take a look at Suno real quick. Yeah, as you can see, 346. Now, if they didn't have 12 Swadian Knights... If they didn't have 62 men-at-arms, if they had about, I don't know, 30 men-at-arms and about 5 knights, maybe no knights. I, I, I'd much prefer having no knights, to be honest. Yeah, only days. <laughs> oh, I had to make that again. Yes, I had to do that again. Anyway, point is, it would have been much better, yeah, a much better prospect for us to take if someone had wounded it. You know, if someone had sort of weakened it just a little bit. You know, maybe the Saranids, maybe the, you know, the Nords or the Rodox or something along those lines. But it seems like that is not going to be the case, and we're going to have a pretty hard time of it if we are unable to get them out of there, you know? And, I mean, it's going to take, what, 100 days for us to get the food situation down? So basically it's going to, yeah, it's going to be 100 days of pure sieging so three months in game to you know get them out of there by starving them out. So it's not going to happen anytime soon, I don't think. But Beheshtur has arrived back with us, and I think the only person that hasn't gone, or people, should I say, are Borcha and Jeremus. So Borcha's going to go, and I'm a bit worried about this because I'm the only one with pathfinding now. And our spotting skill is absolutely terrible. But I, I think that's okay. But yeah, as I say, I think Suno is probably not probably not capturable for us right now. But I think the only other thing... I mean, look at the Saranids. They're doing a pretty good job. I don't really want to change my original plan for this series. My original plan was to create my own faction and to spread throughout Calradia as the Reformian Kingdom, you know, so, so on and so forth. But it's kind of a little bit tempting to me right now to either help the claimant from the Saranids, so help the, the claimant from the Saranids spread out throughout the land, because we've never really done that before, with the exception of Floris Expanded, and we didn't really do it too well, to be honest. And uh, the other the other thing would be to help the Saranids to spread throughout the land, but they've only done this, so it's not really a big deal, is it? Uh, I don't know. I think we're still going to stick with the plan, because I'd very much like to see King Barney again, but the claimant is pretty tempting. Anyway, I'm still feeling under the weather from my you know, hospital visit and so on and so forth. If you if you missed that, then, you know, now you know, now you know. And so, yeah, I'm going to be ending this episode off here. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.